This is Dr. Dale Meyer, I'm a pulmonologist practicing in Carmichael uh, near Sacramento, California for the past four decades. Um, we've just the last few weeks been over allergic rhinitis, allergic rhinusinusitis, conjunctivitis, allergic bronchitis, and asthma. Uh, we mentioned in our last uh, uh, issue that um, people with allergic rhinitis, uh, rhinusinusitis, frequently have uh, construction of the bronchial tubes uh, and are not aware of it. So uh, uh, when do you get pulmonary function tests? Well, if you have lung disease, you should always do a pulmonary function test to see what the uh, um, function of the lung is and uh, where you're at uh, on the diagram. Um, so we've been doing uh, uh, pulmonary function tests on people with just hay fever. And uh, we found that uh, more than half of them have asthma, but uh, weren't aware of that. Uh, also, people that have a cough, which is a dry cough, that frequently is the first sign of asthma, and uh, they frequently have a positive pulmonary function test. Uh, to think of it, uh, you have to think of the allergens going into your nose, and you may sneeze, runny eyes, and all this, and goes down into your bronchial tubes, and you have allergic bronchitis. And as it further goes down, then you have allergic asthma. And uh, so uh, if you have allergies up here, it's very likely you're going to have them further down. And so that's the reason we screen that because that's when we can do more good uh, for the uh, patient who's developing disease. And that's really the basis for all the allergy asthma screening programs, but many of them have been unsuccessful. The one we did at the University at uh, Sacramento County Hospital some uh, 40 years ago, it's the patients that came in to be screened were the ones who knew they had disease, so we didn't really pick up a lot of community uh, asthma in that particular case. Okay, uh, this is a, um, a laptop um, um, computer there, and it's set up for a pulmonary function test. And I just uh, placed the mouse piece, uh, pulled it out of a sterile thing, and put it on the uh, um, monitor here, the uh, uh, spirometer. and. Um, so um, this is just a quick one breath test that uh, we uh, do. So basically we have to have a sealed system here and so we have to put a pinch on the patient's nose here so he can't breathe. Fill his mouth and there's no air coming through the nose. So the point is we're measuring accurately what's coming out of the lung and, uh, uh, and we're also measuring the flow and how fast it comes out. So uh, the uh, uh, we set up the air and get the thing starting to calibrate here and uh, we uh, tell the patient when it starts calibrating, it's completed calibration, to put the uh, thing in the mouth and start breathing. I should have told you what I was going to do. Take a deep breath, act, hook up, and then breathe, push it out as fast as I can. And so we have a curve here that shows the air coming out and this, how fast. It looks like I got a, uh, a volume of about close to four liters and a peak flow rate of about uh, nine liters per second. We'll get the accurate numbers here shortly. And uh, let me save this. And I'm at 83% of normal. Um, when the pollen season was hitting here several weeks ago, I, I measured it and I was at 60%. After I took the inhaler, I was at uh, 80%. So I've renormalized here the pollen season down, but I've also treated myself with the long acting uh, asthma changes, uh, asthma treatment. Um, so the, everything always done in duplicate, actually triplicate, anything scientific here, but uh, Patients sometimes uh, get antsy about doing things in triplicate, so we do it in duplicate. And so we do the same thing. Put this on the patient's nose, tell them to take a deep breath, and then went on the site to uh, uh, blow it all out. So I kept the breathing going there for uh, 10 seconds here, and uh, and we have things in duplicate. 
So um, that's the simple uh, before we finally test. Uh, just a one blow, and we measure the whole curve and uh, and get the numbers from that. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and print this out and. Uh, so if we can go over here to the board, I can explain exactly what the pulmonary function test is all about. Um, so uh, in this particular case, uh, um, the vital capacity, let's see, maybe I can make that a little bit darker here. The vital capacity, that's the amount of air from the top all the way down to the bottom. My vital capacity for my age and height should have been 4.9 liters. Okay, and here, uh, this is in uh, uh, June the 9th, so that's just about uh, six weeks ago. Uh, my vital capacity was 3.9, and so that was uh, 80%. And after the bronchodilators, 84%. So the size of my lung at that time was at the lower limits of normal. Now the asthma part of the test, the flow rates, how fast can you make the air flow out? <laughs> the velocity of air, for my age and height, that should have been 3.1 liters per second. And I came up to 1.97 or 2.0 or 64%. So I was only breathing two-thirds normal, and then after the bronchial dilator, it went to 82%, which was a 27% improvement. So it was very important for me to uh, um, take an inhaler every morning because uh, I'm very low, and to get my uh, lungs totally functioning every morning. And I've done that, and obviously I've improved that as we look shortly here. Um, The other thing on a pump breathing test is uh, checking the oxygen, and this is a very simple thing on a um, oximeter. Uh, just put that over the uh, finger and give it a uh, half a minute or so to uh, register the oxygen in your finger, and that's the other part of a pulmonary function test. And uh, so my oxygen is 98%. Uh, that's normal. Okay, so my. My size of my lung was at low limits of normal. I was obstructed, but it was totally reversible, and my oxygen was normal. Okay, let's see what it is today. Um, so looking at it today, my vital capacity it still should be uh, uh, 4.9. And I came up to 4.0, and so it's still 82%. So the size of my lung didn't really change, and we wouldn't expect it to change. The flow rates, how fast I could push it out, uh, my normal is still 0.3.1, and I blew it out at 2.5, and so that was 83%. So my baseline is uh, as good as after the bronchodilators was six weeks ago. So I'm pretty well over my asthma at this point and the long-acting uh, uh, bronchodilators and the uh, steroid inhalers has uh, totally reversed the disease process for now and I'm back to normal and my oxygen is 98 today. So uh, we'd like to put that in a, a diagram for the patients and so they can understand this. Uh, so basically we uh, look at it this way. Uh, uh, you should be at 100% here. 0% of course is kicking the bucket and uh, so where are we on that diagram? So 50% uh, and I was at 64 so that's two-thirds and one-third. So I was sitting at 64% but afterwards it went to 84% normal so I was in this range and uh, this was my low point and my high point was uh, uh, eighty percent uh, so I'm in the normal range so uh, my asthma that I had since childhood is under excellent control but you can see very quickly here that uh, uh, the patient I told you yesterday I saw this week here she was at thirty percent here and didn't think she had asthma and most people don't get symptoms till they get down to uh, this is 66 here, this is 50, and until they get down to about a third normal, and some even less than that. 
and smokers especially, they think that, um, you know, it's just a cigarette cough, it's nothing significant, and uh, they are sometimes very low, and sometimes have patients come in here, they're down to 10% or 7% on their first uh, check here, and they've never been uh, tested before. So um, it's very important to look at the overall picture of your lungs and uh, where you stand and what needs to be done. Uh, this is very important in the treatment of patients because they understand exactly where they are. I see patients in my chair here that gasp when they see this, you know. Oh, I didn't know it was that bad. And you can talk to them about a pulmonary cripple and it's a miserable way of dying. And you can change behavior very quickly. I don't see very many people smoking uh, after I check them out and show them what they are in terms of life and death because that's something basically everybody can understand. So uh, that's our uh, information for today and we thank you for listening and we'll be back with you next week.